Have you ever looked at your phone, your laptop, or even your car and wondered, how can something so tiny control so much? How does a little piece of silicon, no bigger than your fingernail, make a computer think, make a phone smart, or even help a spacecraft fly? That tiny marvel is called a microchip, and in many ways, it's the brain behind modern life. Today, we're diving into the world of microchips, what they are, how they actually work, and why they power just about everything around us. From the way they're made to the role they play in everyday technology, we're going to unpack the invisible engine that drives the digital age. So let's uncover the big purpose of a microchip right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start simple. A microchip, also known as an integrated circuit, is a small electronic component that contains thousands, millions, or even billions of microscopic parts. These parts are mostly transistors, which are like little on-off switches. You can think of them as tiny gates that control the flow of electricity. When arranged in incredibly complex patterns, they allow a chip to process information, make decisions, and run software. In short, a microchip takes in data, processes it using electrical signals, and spits out a result. But the beauty lies in how fast and how small this process has become. But how exactly does a microchip work, turning tiny electrical pulses into actions we can see, like opening an app or making a phone call? Inside the chip, electrical signals travel through circuits, tiny pathways etched into the silicon. Each signal represents bits of data expressed in binary code, just zeros and ones. When a transistor is off, it represents a zero. When it's on, it represents a one. By flipping these switches on and off in incredibly fast sequences, the chip can work through logical operations, carry out instructions, and make decisions based on input like tapping a button or loading a web page. These patterns of activity are what make digital devices work, forming the invisible engine that powers everything from video calls to navigation systems. To go even deeper, the chip follows a set of pre-programmed instructions called machine code, which is the most basic language a computer understands. This code tells the chip exactly how to work, step by step, using combinations of those zeros and ones. Inside the chip are different sections that handle specific tasks. Some work like short-term memory, others perform calculations, and others manage communication with different parts of the device. All of this happens at lightning speed, synchronized by a tiny internal clock that keeps everything in rhythm. So even though the chip doesn't think like a human, it knows how to work through problems, process images, and run software just by flipping billions of microscopic switches at the right time. To really appreciate microchips, you have to go back to the beginning. Computers used to be massive, filling entire rooms. Instead of microchips, they relied on vacuum tubes, which were bulky, fragile, and got hot easily. Then came the transistor, invented in 1947. It was small, more reliable, and much faster. Fast forward to 1958, and Jack Kilby, an engineer at Texas Instruments, put several transistors and components on a single piece of semiconductor material, creating the first integrated circuit. That moment changed everything. From then on, chips got smaller, cheaper, and exponentially more powerful. The famous prediction called Moore's Law said that the number of transistors on a chip would double every two years. And for decades, that held true, pushing us from room-sized machines to smartphones in our pockets. So how does one actually make a microchip? It all starts with silicon, which comes from sand. Silicon is a semiconductor, it can conduct electricity, but not as freely as metal. That makes it perfect for controlling electrical signals, 
manufacturers take ultra-pure silicon and cut it into thin wafers. Then begins a process that's equal parts science and magic, photolithography. This is where light is used to etch incredibly small patterns onto the wafer. Chemicals, ion beams, and vaporized metals are added layer after layer to build the complex network of transistors and connections. When we say these things are tiny, we're not kidding. Some modern chips have features measured in nanometers, that's billionths of a meter. For context, a human hair is about 80,000 to 100,000 nanometers wide. Some of today's chips have transistors that are just three nanometers across. Making a chip can take weeks and involves hundreds of steps in rooms so clean, even a speck of dust could ruin everything. The result? A wafer filled with dozens or hundreds of chips, each one packed with unimaginable complexity. There are different kinds of chips depending on the job. A CPU or central processing unit is like the brain of your computer. It does general tasks. A GPU or graphics processing unit handles images and video. And now there are specialized chips like NPUs for artificial intelligence or ASICs made for specific tasks like mining cryptocurrency. But the magic behind them all? Billions of tiny switches flipping on and off millions of times per second, all to help you text, stream, scroll, or launch a rocket. You might not see microchips, but they are literally everywhere. In your phone, there are chips for processing, graphics, memory, wireless communication, and even power management. In your car, chips control the brakes, the engine timing, the touchscreen, and the airbags. Even something as dumb as a washing machine now has a microcontroller, a small chip that manages cycles and settings. Medical devices? Chips help monitor your heart rate or control an insulin pump. Airplanes? Chips manage navigation, communication, and safety. Even traffic lights, vending machines, and elevators rely on them. It's not just that chips are fast or small, it's that they become cheap and efficient enough to fit into nearly anything. That's why the modern world is so tightly intertwined with microchip technology. So, next time you unlock your phone, start your car, or stream a video, remember, there's a tiny invisible world making it all happen. Billions of switches flipping in sync at lightning speed. Microchips may be small, but they've built the foundation of our digital world. They've changed how we work, play, travel, and even communicate. And while we rarely see them, they're working non-stop behind the scenes, turning electrical pulses into life as we know it. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.